What up everyone? Are you preparing for data science interviews but you're not sure how? Hi, I'm Dan. I'm the founder of DataNTV.com and ex-Google and PayPal data scientist. In this video, I'll talk about five tips that can be really helpful in preparing for data science interviews. These are tips that I myself use as a candidate in 2019 to land my dream job at Google. And also tips that interview users at DataNTV.com use to land their dream job at top tech companies. Now let's get started. Here's prep tip number one preparation strategy. If you don't have a plan, it's sort of like navigating through a new city without any GPS or map. The bottom line is you're going to get very lost. So there's a couple of things that you need to ask yourself as you're preparing. The very first question you want to ask yourself is what are the top companies or target companies you want to work for? Is it Google? Is it Facebook? Or do you want to be a little bit realistic based on your current qualifications? Once you have a list of companies you want to work for, from there, you know, just go on job posts that these companies publish and then look at their qualification and skill sets and see if it matched with your current um, resume or your portfolio. The second question you want to ask yourself is, what are resources that I can leverage as a way to prepare for data science interviews? You know, definitely check out datainterview.com because it's got a lot of content, business cases, SQL, along with Slack community group as a way to prepare for interviews. Definitely check it out, datainterview.com. And the third question you want to ask yourself is the duration. So how long do you want to give yourself before you're looking for another job? Um, is it going to be four weeks or three months? You know, asking yourself this is going to help you devise, um, you know, what your curriculum looks like. So let's take an example. Suppose that, you know, you give yourself three months to look for another job. In this case, if I was your coach and I was helping you devise a personalized curriculum based on your search, what I would probably do is I would first of all have you spend one month, uh, the first month focus on applying for roles and just doing a general prep across fundamentals. So regardless of whatever interviews you're going on, um, the bottom line is a lot of the skill sets that are required in data science roles are pretty much the same. You kind of have to know coding, whether it's R or Python, you got to know the fundamentals of that. You have to be able to do SQL, you have to know statistics, uh, machine learning, and business case problems. So regardless of whether you have interviews lined up or not, if you know you're gonna start to search, I would start doing the preparation on those topics right now. Now in month two, this is where hopefully by then, um, you've heard from companies that want to interview you. So this is where you're going phone screening and then you're gonna go on site. And while you're doing the preparation for fundamental topics, as I mentioned for month one, you're also at the same time really focusing on researching the companies as much as you can as you're entering the company interviews. And then the final stage, the third month, is really hopefully, you know, by this point, you've gone through the onsite um, and you've, you're now sort of awaiting to hear back in terms of whether you are going to get an offer or not. And this is really where you wrap things up. You, you focus on, you know, negotiation in, in, in terms of total compensation and benefits for the company that you want to work for. Um, so all in all, you know, that might take about three months in generally when you're, whenever you're doing, uh, whenever you're trying to change a job in data science. The next thing I want to share is practice schedule. And this really boils down to how much time you are willing to invest. It really depends on the level of difficulty of the interviews that you're going to be entering. You know, you may want to invest maybe three hours if you know that you're going to be interviewing for top tech companies, which are fairly challenging interviews or you might invest as little as 30 minutes. And you also have to think about the days of the week when you're available for this. And I'm sure most of you either are on some data science boot camp or you have a full-time job. So I know it can be very tricky in terms of, you know, finding the time to actually do the practice. For me in 2019, when I was actively looking for another job, you know, I had a full-time job. And so what I would do is I would try to find 90 minutes or sometimes even two hours on a daily basis. And this is really important for me to practice on a daily basis just so I can get in the habit of just turning out as many questions as I can so I'm fully ready when I'm going on these phone screen and on-site interviews for you know fang companies and startups and so forth. And so what I would do personally was invest about 90 minutes to two hours daily, you know, Monday through Sunday. Um, going through a couple topics. So how I would structure my daily practice is the following. So suppose I was giving myself two hours of practice. So in this case, what I would do is spend the first 20 minutes 
on SQL questions. Um, and then the next 20 minutes on coding questions. And then the next 20 minutes on brushing up on statistics and ML fundamental questions. So just, you know, basic stuff like, you know, what is the variance and bias trade-off? There's really no curveball behind this besides just creating a index card and going through some of these concepts and explaining the definition out loud. And then whatever time I have left, um, I would use the remaining one hour on business case problems. And of course, you can definitely find business case problems on datainterview.com as a way to get that extra practice you need. Uh, so this is what I personally use, and it really depends on what your personal schedule allows and what you're, you know, what you're willing to do. And so I would seriously recommend that you really schedule your time whenever you're preparing for data science interviews. The next tip I want to cover is research. This is probably the most overlooked stage whenever you're preparing for data science interviews. Candidates think that you know, you, if you just brush up on SQL coding and some business case problems, you're going to be ready. Well, the thing is that you actually do need to spend the time to do the homework. And that homework assignment is to research the company that you are going to be interviewing for. So for instance, when I was preparing for Google's data science interview, which was scheduled you know, three weeks out, um, I read everything there is to know about Google. It wasn't just using Google product alone, like Google search um, was enough for me to understand it. I really had to understand the business model. So there are a couple of resources that you can definitely tap into whenever you're preparing for um, you know, company interviews. And so these are the four resources that you should definitely take advantage of. So starting with the first one, um, you definitely want to look into the company financials. It's a bit of a sicker sauce in terms of whenever you're preparing for interviews. The reason why you want to look at you know, the financials such as the 10Q or the 10K statements is because especially in the beginning sections of these financial statements, um, you know, what they have are some descriptions about, you know, what the uh, company and the product North Star metrics are, where they're at, what they're trying to do. And so these are information that can be really helpful when you're doing business case problems for these interviews. You can directly cite some of these numbers, thereby impressing the interviewer that you actually know what you're talking about in terms of business sense. Um, and, and also, it kind of helps you whenever you're practicing, you know, these case-based problems it puts you in this sort of mindset that you know you are at the end of the day not just solving a technical problem, but you're actually actually solving a business case problem. So I definitely highly recommend that you check that out. The second resource I would definitely tap into is using the product and services that the company is offering to the users. Um, and what that basically means is that becoming an active user for a week or two as you're preparing for the interview. The third resource I would definitely tap into is typically after you have uh, spoken to the interviewer, they'll kind of list you know, what are rounds and who is going to speak to you. Um, I would definitely take advantage by looking up the names of those individuals on LinkedIn. And here's why. So interviewers will often provide some job descriptions about you know, what they're currently working on, what they have done in the past. And most likely, whatever interview questions you're going to get is to a large extent based on their personal experience. Like if an interviewer has never had any experience in running A-B testing or causal inference, most likely they're not gonna ask you that question because they don't know what the solution is. So going on their LinkedIn profile and just sort of sweeping through, you know, what kind of experiences they might have had um, is certainly helpful. And also at the same time, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I when I interviewed for Google, um, I did a thorough research, and at some point, I did bring up, um, you know, some of the things that this person has worked on, and and the interview was really impressed that I've done that level of research of you know looking into it, and so you know, uh, definitely use that as a resource whenever you're preparing. And the fourth resource is definitely taking advantage of tech blogs. Um, so a lot of the you know, fan companies will have engineering blogs and also many startups as well. Um, this is really good exposure in terms of what type of projects they work on, you know, what are the data sets they're working on, you know, make note of these things. Um, obviously, some of these technical uh, blogs or journals um, can be a little bit tricky to understand unless you've been in the project per se, but at least reading through it and getting a high level understanding of what they work on. Um, along with some of the data sets that you work on can be really helpful, especially when you're 
um, as to you know solve some of the business case problems. So I definitely use would use that um, as another resource as well. The fourth preparation tip is using the Feynman method. This by no means is my favorite technique as a way to practice explaining things out loud, but also at the same time, it's a great way to assess yourself to see, to see what you understand and what you don't understand. It's something that I use in my college courses to get um, A's on you know, very difficult classes like theoretical statistics. Um, as I like to think about it, you know, if you can't explain it, then you don't really know it. And so the idea behind the Feynman method is really, you know, you might have a sheet of paper or a whiteboard um, and you just write a, a keyword or, um, or basically like an interview question and then you try to explain it out loud. And I would do this during my daily practice regimen where I would actually force myself to speak out loud. And believe me, I hate my own voice and it sounds a little bit awkward, but just doing in that um, practice style can be really helpful because at the end of the day, um, interviews are oral exercise. It's not a, it's not really a written exercise unless you're given like a take home assignment, but even then eventually you're going to have to do some present presentation. So just get in the habit of ex explaining things out loud. Um, and that's what I did, you know, so for an example, um, one question I would always sort of drill myself in is, um, asking myself, you know, what is variance and bias trade off? Um, and so I would, you know, basically start by explaining that variance is the variability of the model prediction and the bias is the deviation of the model prediction from the actual values. Now there's a trade off between the two such that if you increase variance, bias is going to decrease. So it's a very short sort of definition in terms of how you sort of explain it. And I would do this not just for these, um, you know, closed loop definition based questions, but open ended business case problems as well. Um, and if you want to look into a framework in terms of how you respond to business case problems, um, there's a link below. I've published a Medium article about it along with the YouTube video. Um, I would definitely check that out. Um, and so, yeah, definitely use Feynman method as a way to practice. The last tip I want to provide is really work with the recruiters. Um, I've coached a couple clients here and there, and I can tell that sometimes they just don't have enough information about the interview process itself. Um, I asked them, you know, do you know what rounds you're going to be on? Um, do you know who the interviewers are? And they are somewhat blank state in terms of, you know, because they simply just didn't ask the information to get ready. You know, interview is like a game. You have to know what the rules are, you know, what, how it's going to be tested, how the score is going to be done. And in fact, recruiters want to help you. Of course, at the end of the day, they're representing the company that they're work for, working for, but at the same time, they're really betting on you. And so you have to work with them to basically help you. And so, you know, ask key questions to the recruiters, like, you know, what are the rounds um, I'm expected to have? You know, who are the interviewers that are going to be interviewing me? You know, how many technical and non-technical interviews I have? Um, and ask them for if they if there's any resources that you can use to prepare for interviews. Um, and more often than not, they're willing to help you out with these resources. So that way you are much more prepared. And it's a win-win situation for, um, for the recruiter and also you, should you succeed. So definitely work with the recruiter as a way to prepare for the interviews. All right, guys, hope you found this video helpful for you. Make sure you like, subscribe, and check out datainterview.com. For a limited time only, I'm offering 20% off on any of the coaching services uh, along with the subscription course. The subscription course contains six content um, and one of the core feature being the business case problems that comes with the questions that think companies will ask along with the solution that contains the uh, interviewer and um, candidate dialogue and an assessment. And so these features are going to be really helpful for you for your prep as they have been for candidates who ended up using the course and ace their data science interviews at FANG companies. So make sure you check it out and I'll see you in the next video.